Let's see, I think I'm live, but you know, Facebook keeps changing things. <laughs> so hopefully I'm live. Let's see, welcome, welcome. If you are here, let me know, can I be seen and can I be heard? And then we'll dive in because I have a lot of information for you today, which is super exciting. Let's see here. I don't see anybody. I'm in the Crystal Club. My stream health is going. All right, we're just gonna wing it and get started. Give it one more second. This is Thursday, right? Everything feels like, like what day is it <laughs> still, even to this day, because now we've moved from like when school should have been happening to summertime. And so there was just no like schedule transition. It was just surprise, spring break, no more school. Okay, so I'm gonna get started. Hey friends, I'm Audrey, functional and integrative nurse nutritionist and energy medicine practitioner with Gemstone Well. I'm a certified crystal healer and advanced crystal master. And as usual, I am so excited to be hanging out with y'all today. As I mentioned last time, we are gonna start a chakra series. And so today we're gonna to do the root chakra and the earth star chakra and the grounding chakra uh, because there's a lot of different um, chakra systems, if you will, even though most people have only heard of one. Um, and I love the chakras. You'll probably notice a lot of little things like my bookshelf is organized in the chakra colors, you know, Roy G. Biv. Uh, I rainbow all the things. My essential oils over here on a rack on the wall, they're all Roy G. Biv. Um, so I, it's one of my very favorite topics, the chakra system. I even have a chakra, chakra tattoo. Anyways, um, I'm super excited to be hanging out with y'all. I also want to take a moment to welcome our newest members. I'm excited for y'all to be here. Make sure you jump in and join the conversation. We have a really great community uh, here in the Crystal Club. And while we're waiting to see if anyone else is joining, I'll do a little housekeeping. If you have questions, make sure you pop them in the comments. I'll try to answer them right away. If not, I'll go back and scroll through at the end of class if we have time and see if I can get them answered for you. If not, if that doesn't work, I'll come back and type the answers. Um, I want this to be interactive and conversational. It's much more fun that way. Um, so if you talk to me in the chat box, I can answer and interact with you. Please know that there is at least a 30 second delay. I used to say up to a 30 second delay, but it seems to be changing rapidly. So if I don't answer you right away, it could be that I missed it, um, but I'll get right back to you. And then also sometimes as what happened last week, especially going into Mercury retrograde, Facebook gets tired of me talking and kicks me off, right? So if that happens, I'll pop right back on, don't worry. You might have to refresh a couple of times to get the feed to come back. And if for some reason you can't find me, don't fret, don't worry about it. Um, our amazing team at Gemstone Well will put Humpty Dumpty back together again when they send out the replay. All right, so like I said, we have a ton of stuff to cover today. Oh, I do have a pendulum. I was like, and I didn't bring a pendulum. Um, so I want to get started. Um, if you've been with us for a while, you've probably heard at least about part of my energy routine, my Friday morning tune-ups, if you will. And it's part of self-care, right? It's part of my self-care routine, and I encourage you guys to do it too, to do some form of full chakra tune-up every week, right? And you can choose your, you know, your routine. It could be monthly or bi-weekly or daily, if you will, um, but I, I do it every morning on Fridays. And, you know, I either use crystals or energy medicine or shamanic journeying or oils or sounds or some combination of all of those things to kind of give a tune-up, right? And check in on how each pendulum each chakra is doing usually with my pendulum um, or with my hand and then i sometimes focus specific attention on an area that might need it but usually my friday morning time is spent um 20 minutes up to you know up to an hour if i need it but usually around 20 minutes just sort of tuning everything up giving a little bit of energetic love to everything if you want to brush up on how to do that I went and looked and we talked about that October of 2019 so you should be able to go to the videos here in the Facebook group and find that from October 2019 I encourage you to go check it out if you don't have that sort of built in to your routine already and I'll show you I actually have it scheduled <laughs> every Friday morning and ooh, every Friday morning in my calendar, crystal session. <laughs> so I actually, like I block the time so nobody else can get it. 
Um, and that's really important to do, right? So if you want to, again, brush up on those techniques, go back to the October 2019 video and I go in depth on exactly what to do there. So I do want to review before we jump into each of the chakras, I want to review what is a chakra altogether. So we know that a chakra is one of the body's three subtle energy systems and the three energy systems are physical, emotional, and mental, sometimes also called planetary, astral, and spiritual. A subtle energy system isn't physical, it's metaphysical, right? So or beyond physical, more than physical. So it means that if you, you can't access all of it with your standard five senses. You can access some of it, but not all of it with your standard um, five senses. When I'm trying to explain subtle energy, like subtle energy versus physical energy, I like to explain it as clouds versus clay. Subtle energy is the clouds. It's real, sometimes you can see them, you can feel them, but you can't like pick it up and move it, right? Whereas physical energy is more like clay. It's solid and dense and you can pick it up and move it around. So um, when you're thinking of the chakra system, that's subtle energy, right? Um, and the way the chakra system is kind of a, a system, if you will, of organizing that subtle energy into gateways for our use and access and for um, working with particular parts of the body. It's a gateway where our human suits convert physical energy into subtle energy and subtle energy into physical energy. So the word chakra itself is translated from Sanskrit, right? Chakra means spinning wheel of light. And the chakras manage energy just like the heart manages the circulatory system. So the heart manages all the blood in the body. The lungs manage the oxygenation or the oxygen exchange in the body. The pineal gland, which is kind of right between the eyes and dead center in your skull, um, manages a lot of things, so do the heart and lungs, but manages sleep in the same way. So when we're thinking of chakras, let me see, I see comment. Maria says, hi, hello, Maria. Awesome, I'm glad you're here. So we're talking about the chakras and then we're gonna get into the root and earth star chakra. So um, there are major chakras and minor chakras, with lots of different jobs. And we're gonna cover what's considered the main seven chakras. And I'm gonna add a few of the minors like I am today as we go, because I think it's important to recognize all the different aspects or all the aspects that you can. <laughs> we could go over all of them. That'd be years and years worth of courses. Um, but recognize all the aspects that you can of of the main chakras and the chakra systems and the benefits that they have to your body. Uh, so as we go through this, think of the chakras just like the physical organs in your body. They're made of energy, both the same, and they both have really, really important jobs to do. The difference is, is that your heart, for example, versus your heart chakra, your heart, the particles of energy, the atoms are much closer together. So it gives you the physical, the clay, right? Whereas the energetic um, the heart chakra, the energies, the subtle energies of the heart chakra are the clouds. So the, those atoms are farther apart. They're vibrating farther apart and it gives you a more, more subtle energy. Um, a lot of times chakras are depicted just on the front of your body. You know, most of the pictures that we see are just chakras on the front of the body. Um, but they're actually more like tornadoes or vortices, a uh, vortex. And they kind of start in and go out, but they go on both sides of your body with the narrowest part being the closest to your body. Um, healthy chakras spin nice and balanced, right? And this is just a review. We have some other chakra videos um, in the kind of in the vault here in the Facebook group, um, but they spin like tornadoes, right? Um, and they spin in a balanced clockwise motion for healthy chakras. I should say most healthy chakras spin in a balanced clockwise motion. About 80, 85% of the people that I run into, the people that I work on, have chakras that spin clockwise. Sometimes they spin counterclockwise and that's their normal rotation, but sometimes that means something's out of balance, right? Uh, it's interesting to note, I may have mentioned this in another chakra class, that if you have cowlicks in your hair, um, a lot of times that's the direction of your chakra spin. Uh, so when I first learned that, I was like, I think I had a definitely one child, but she probably was less than one years old. I was like looking at her head, you know, like, okay, show me, show me which way your chakras spin. Um, so that's an interesting thing. If you have littles or even adults, anybody with a cowlick, you can see which way their um, cowlick spins. Um, sometimes you can even tell by the way the hair parts naturally, although 
a lot of times we kind of train our hair to part a certain way. So it's easiest to tell on small children with cowlicks. Um, something else to note is that chakras need to be open and spinning freely to work properly, right? That's that balance that I'm talking about, that real pretty vortex. But one thing that a lot of people don't realize is that they also have to be connected vertically as well. Um, and so alignment is really, really important. And I've even found myself just as I was reviewing what I was going to talk to you all about today. Um, you know, when you sit at the computer, you kind of get one of these, you know, kind of slouched over. Well, that's really bad alignment. That means my chakras can't communicate with each other in the way that they should. And so you really want to sit up. So alignment is really, really critical. When you're sitting or standing, you want to think of standing or sitting with postural ease, right? And so that's ears over shoulders, shoulders over hips, right? And even then, I thought I was doing it when I was telling it. And then when I touched my shoulders and said shoulders over hips, I was like, whoop, nope, still not, still not in alignment. Um, and so that's something called postural ease. It's really, really easy once you kind of get the hang of it. Um, hips over ankles is sort of the last part. Um, it keeps the densest physical tissue out of the way. So if I'm sitting like this, then my spine is actually blocking between my heart chakra and my throat chakra. Hopefully my shirt is staying in the right spot, but my um, when you slouch, you're you're blocking it with your spine and that's really dense tissue for that energy to have to push through, right? So when I'm working with, um, I don't teach yoga classes anymore, but sometimes people have me come teach a workshop. One of the things I like to teach my students to do is do a five pointed star. So you stand with your feet wider than shoulder width apart and you put your arms up and you extend out and up and down as far as you can in every direction. And what that does is it really puts that space and that vertical alignment in, in place. And then I have them take their arms down and maintain that vertical alignment to maintain your vertical alignment for your chakras. Lori says, hi. Hi, Lori. Good to see you. Um, okay, so vertical alignment for the chakras is really, really important. So when you're thinking of when you're sitting, when you're working at the computer, when you're standing, having a conversation, even when you're eating, ears over shoulders, shoulders over hips, hips over ankles when you're standing. If you're sitting, you want just a 90 degree angle, okay? Um, three main uh, functions of the chakras, and this is where science and sort of the woo-woo energy work meet, and that's one of my favorite things, right? So physical processing is one function. Um, a lot of the chakras have a, a body location, right? So they're generally associated with a nerve plexus. And I have pictures today to show you guys of some of that when we get into the root chakra. Um, so they're, they're generally associated with a nerve plexus, endocrine, endocrine glands, hormone secretion glands, um, and they manage part of the body, a physical part of the body. There's also a psychological aspect to each chakra. And that includes, you know, the sort of the mental framework, the mental constructs, if you will, that affect our overall wellness, right? And it helps to process belief and feelings and all sorts of things, right? And then the third function is spiritual processing. And that's how each chakra contributes to our spiritual well being and spiritual development. Or another way to think of that is like your consciousness maturing to a sense of self. So you're probably thinking, oh Lord, Andre's way off in woo-woo land. But science actually supports that we can measure these energy centers. I've recommended this book to you guys before, but um, Vibrational Medicine by Richard Gerber. It's a thick one and it's science heavy, so read it in little bits. But you can see my copy is highlighted and dog-eared and marked all up. It is a really, really good book on getting to know the subtle energies, including the chakras and a whole lot of other ones um, in your body. Anytime somebody ever kind of gives me the, what, about chakras or energy work, I'm like, okay, so you don't buy into that there is a subtle energy field that we can measure it, but you buy into that we, you can lay in a tube and I can see through your body at whatever layer I want. It's all the same principle. It's all the same um, physics and quantum physics at work to do those things. And honestly, I didn't connect the dots for that myself uh, until Richard Gerber. <laughs> so he's, it's a good book to, to have. It's a little bit expensive, um, but you might be able to grab a used copy on Amazon. Um, 
Another cool thing that isn't widely publicized is that all ancient indigenous cultures have a chakra system. They didn't always call it a chakra system because chakra, the word chakra is Sanskrit, right? So that's a Hindu or an Indian term. But African continent, uh, Egypt, uh, Old Europe, Vikings, Celtic, Greek, Scandinavians, Middle Easterners, even North, Ameri North American Native Americans like Sioux, uh, Sioux Nation, Iroquois, Mesoamericans, and then of course the South American Incans, all of that England, they all had some version of the chakra system. Um, the chakra system that I often talk about when I include things like the Earth Star Chakra, it's not traditionally one of the seven Hindu chakras, right? But it's still an energy center, it's still a chakra. It's sort of making that a melting pot of a lot of the um, indigenous energy workers um, that, that sort of put this all together, right? I think the reason why the Hindu system is so popular is because of the commercialization of yoga and how yoga kind of came to America. But there is a route in every culture for these wheels of energy. And it's really fascinating to me how indigenous cultures without the communication methods that we have now all came up <laughs> with the same principle, right? The same principle, just a different word to describe it. But if you look at the drawings and research the history of it, it's all the same, right? They just called it different different items or different, uh, they gave it different labels, but in their description, they had the same function. And even cooler now is that we now have Eastern and Western chakras and they correlate and can be proven in modern conventional medicine, which makes me really excited. <laughs> so, Okay, so Last part of the review before we jump in, checking your chakras. If you guys remember, we had a couple different ways that you could do it. You could use a pendulum to check your chakras. And this is a, I think this is one, yeah, a client made this for me. So it's got a little elephant on the top. Not all chakras look the same, and, or chakras, pendulums, not all chakras either. Um, but you can use anything as a pendulum. You can put a, you know, a, a washer on a string. You can use a necklace, car keys, you know, whatever. You can use whatever you want, um, but you can check with your pendulum. So you can check in and ask, you know, cho so, I can't talk y'all show me the root chakra and see if it will spin for you. And sometimes it'll show you the spin. So um, I'm probably moving too much. Usually I rest my elbow on something, but I don't have anything. I don't know if y'all, yeah, y'all can't see that. Um, so you can ask it to show you the root chakra. If you are flexible enough, you can lay down and try to, see if you can see the spin there. If you remember correctly, we're talking about the root chakra today. That root chakra on your hand is right here. There is a file in the group with the, this, that image. Um, so you could check it that way if you prefer. You can also use a proxy board like I showed you last time um, or a doll or a stuffed animal, um, you know, anything really to check. You can draw a stick figure. Uh, and check your chakras that way. Another way to do it, you know, I'm a big fan of not having to have any tools, right? So another way to do it is to kind of rub your hands together and shake it off using your left hand, that is generally your receiving hand, and just run down. And you might feel warm air or cool air, any difference could be a little bit different for anyone. And you can, can kind of feel where the, the sensation changes, if you will. So that is another way to do it. Um, so today we're going to focus on, I, I wrote 2.5 chakras, so we're going we're gonna to focus on two main chakras, really one, the root chakra, but I did want to talk to you about the earth star chakra and um, the grounding chakra because I just feel like they're too important not to include. So for the earth star chakra, there are two currents that I want you to think about um, that uh, we refer to when we're when we're talking about running energy and i don't know if you've ever heard that that term but running energy like I'll, i might say running energy up and down the chakras one is the manifesting current and that one is bringing energy from the upper chakras down and through your root okay and the other is the liberating current and that is bringing energy from your root chakra um, on your lower chakras up and through your top or your upper chakras the first chakra we usually refer to as the root, because again, that's that Hindu interpretation. Um, but like I said, the earth star chakra is really the first, right? It is below your feet and it depends on which 
uh, chakra, you know, what, what region your chakra information came from. But some people consider the Earth Star Chakra about six inches below the bottom of your feet. And others, which I kind of like this definition better, consider it whatever your arm's length, your arm's length below the bottom of your feet. Um, so it actually goes into the Earth, right? Um, the grounding chakra is just up from that, and that is actually on the bottom of your feet, okay? So crystals for these two chakras, black kyanite, black obsidian, black tourmaline, black tourmaline, onyx, smoky quartz, hematite, and Dalmatian Jasper. Isn't that one cute? Dalmatian Jasper is so cute. Let me make sure. I can't see I can't see me in the camera, so I'm not sure if you guys can see what I'm showing you. Dalma yeah, I think you can. Dalmatian Jasper. Just has a cute energy about it. But those are for your Earth Star Chakra. The very, you can use crystals it, they work great for this. The very best way to heal these two chakras is by getting your bare feet on the earth. Um, so just going outside on concrete, on grass, on dirt, whatever you have available to you, barefoot on the earth. Um, I may have mentioned to y'all before, our floors, our wood floors in our home are actually um, grounding. They are grounded. So when you walk barefoot on our wood floors, they ground your feet. And we did that intentionally. Um, because I feel like that is so, so very important. Maria says she can see them. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad. Um, so the earth star chakra and the grounding chakra at the bottom of your feet are super, super important. And a lot of times people have problems like neuropathy. They have tingling in their feet. They have restless leg syndrome and there's a disconnect. Now it's not the only problem, but it's the ignition of the problem, if you will. There's a disconnect between that root chakra and what's below it, that root chakra and what is down below your legs. And that causes a problem. One of the things that I like to do and that I've been doing really, really frequently, in fact, my husband jokes, I'm like, is your foot rock down there? Um, is that I have a piece of hematite. It's a little bit bigger than this one. Um, and this is, I don't know, about half of a baseball. It's, it's the size of a baseball this way, but not the, not all the way around but a piece of hematite and it's at the foot of my bed near the covers and it's probably close to six inches from the, the from the bottom of my foot um but the last couple of weeks um i've been putting it at the bottom of my feet because i've been waking up in the middle of the night and kind of being stressed right my mind starts racing with all the things that i have to do so that's a really really good solution for that um earthy scents like patchouli are also really really good for these chakras if you're into um essential oils. A lot of people think that these lower chakras aren't much fun. Um, just a sec. That the liberating current, the current that comes from the root and comes up, um, isn't as exciting as the manifesting current, but they're both critical, right? And grounding is really, really important. It's important for your spiritual path. It's really important for your physical health really important for your physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, and energetic wellness, okay? Um, without grounding, we are unstable. We lose our center. Uh, you can fly off the handle more easily. You can get swept away more easily. You can stay kind of stuck in that daydream or fantasy world, or even stay in anxiety sometimes. And so one way to tell that your earth star and your grounding chakras are out of balance, did I tell you where the grounding chakras are? The grounding chakras are directly on the bottom of your feet. But one way to tell that maybe something's off, aside from anxiety, um, is that natural excitement becomes diluted, right? It's, it, it's the best words, physical words I could come up with to describe it, but natural excitement becomes diluted either with anxiousness, anxious excitement, or the opposite. So kind of a depressed and sluggish and um, I think Eeyore type excitement, right? Um, so it loses its effect. Excitement loses its effect. It has the wrong effect or no effect when we aren't grounded. Okay. So that brings us to the root chakra, which is also a very grounding chakra. 
And most people, like I said, they consider it the first chakra, but technically it's not. It's only the first chakra in the Hindu system, which is most widely known. So we're going to go with those meanings rather than going through each indigenous culture and giving you the name and all of that. But we're going to kind of stick to that Hindu um, meaning. But I do encourage you to look up, especially if you know your own ancestry. So we're Irish, um, McLaughlin, if you can't figure that out. But that's my married name, my maiden name, Shores, and then my maiden, my mom's maiden name, Rosebro, um, are also Irish. We were, so we're Irish all the way back. So for me, we looked up Celtic stuff. Um, and that's really where I focus. And then we have some Native American and different things kind of interwoven in there. And, and I explored each of those paths. It can be a lot to try to explore all the paths. So I encourage you to kind of look back through your an ancestry. And it's interesting how it'll, their words that, that they used to describe it back then, the drawings, the symbols that they used for the chakras will really, really resonate most frequently with you for the ones that your ancestry, your lineage kind of developed, right? We're going to do the Hindi ones today because that's the ones that are, are most popular. So in Sanskrit, it's called the Muladhara Chakra. It's right at the base of the spinal column. And this is where I get to get my favorite human body book out for y'all. And I marked the pages. In practice, this seems like it would be easy because I use this a lot with my clients and patients. So this is a skeleton. Let me move this so I can see what I'm showing you. This is a skeleton. And the chakra is going to be right here. So right at the base of the spine. If you look at this reverse picture, you can almost see a little bit better. It's going to be right, it's hard to do mirror image, right here, right at the base of the spine, okay? So a lot of times it's considered, um, you know, the tailbone kind of goes whoop at the end, right at the base of that coccyx, that tailbone. Usually it's shown in red, that's kind of the common color for the root chakra, but in reality it's a spectrum, right? It's a spectrum of reds and browns and blacks, um, or from red all the way to black. Um, it really corresponds with, I'll show you this one too, the sacral coccygeal nerve plexus, which is interesting because that nerve plexus goes all the way down and connects to the feet, which is where the grounding chakra is. So let me go back and show you the picture. So we're looking here, so you can see where these two big branches come off. Those are your sciatic nerves, right? And so this is where the root chakra is, right here in the center, okay? And they connect all the way down. You do have a, a minor chakra in each knee, and then they connect down to your grounding chakra. <laughs> I'm not so great at the mirrored image. The grounding chakra right at the bottom of your feet, and then that earth star chakra would be just a little bit below that. Um, so sciatica, that is a root chakra problem. Maria says, when I do a chakra healing on myself, I always include the earth star and the soul star chakras. Yes, and we are going to talk about soul star and as well as an ancillary one that's kind of off here to the side when we work our way up the chakras. Very, very good to include those. Um, so like I said, it, it starts right there at the base of the spine, sciatic nerve, and it goes all the way down. There are lots of informative bodies that say that the root chakra manages the hips, but also all the way down to the feet, the entire lower extremity. And I really feel like those intermediary chakras have more to do with that. Now, those are minor chakras. The major chakra, of course, is the root right there. Um, interestingly, the glands, a lot of people think the root chakra governs the sexual glands. That's actually the sacral chakra. The glands associated with the root chakra are the adrenal glands. And the adrenal glands sit quite a bit higher up. They're on your kidneys. They're like little power packs that sit on top of your kidneys on both sides. Um, and they control stress hormones. So it's very interesting because grounding is always, always prescribed for patients with stress related disorders. In fact, three out of four health issues in general, regardless of whether you know you're going to the doctor for a stress-related issue or not, are actually stress-related issues. I just challenged my um, Instagram audience to uh, 
give me a condition and I'll explain to them how it is related to stress, right? Because a lot of people don't make that connection. Um, ways to know if your root chakra or the lower extremity chakras, so also your grounding chakra at your feet, the chakras at your knees, or even the earth star chakra below that are out of balance. And a lot of people, if you have questions, often these, these disease categories bring up questions, but ways to know that they're out of balance include autoimmune disease, eating disorders, headaches, lack of focus, right? So think of your busy kids or busy grandkids or busy nieces and nephews or busy neighbors, right? Those kids that are running around outside with their shoes on, not very grounded, right? So oftentimes you can see a marked difference in focus and ADHD and ADD just by getting kids to take off their shoes and walking around outside barefoot for a little bit. Anxiety is a big, big, big sign that your root chakra is out of whack, as is depression, okay? One is disconnect, two, uh, depression is too much root chakra, and I know we've talked about that some before. If you get sick frequently, that is a root chakra weakness. Um, often it involves another aspect of the chakra, so strep throat might be root chakra immune system wise, and then throat chakra for the damage and, and inflammation that happens there. That's where it landed. So it's a combination problem. Um, over or underweight, that is a root chakra issue. Arthritis, whether it's osteoarthritis or rheumatoid arthritis, rheumatoids and autoimmune disease, but either of those are root chakra issues. Skin issues, always the root chakra. Bone and teeth disorders. A lot of people don't realize that. All bone and teeth disorders, root chakra, because that's where your nutrients are absorbed. Um, and then life-challenging addictions, heavy uh, drug or alcohol use are very often either root chakra or upper chakra or some combination of both. Emotionally, things that we're looking for when we're looking for imbalances in the root chakra are um, imbalances in that, that's a good way to say it, that primary or primal, the feeling that you're worthy, right? So if you... Um, don't feel worthy all the way up to a very ego driven type emotion or feeling or energy. That is that spectrum of the root chakra. You kind of want to be right in the middle, right? Knowing, knowing your worth, but not imposing that worth on everyone else, you know? Um, but somewhere in the middle there from not worthy to egotistical is going to be, um, going to be that root chakra spectrum, okay? Root chakra also houses the prime, primal feelings like anger and sadness, joy, um, and then survival reactions like rage and despair and terror and rejection and shame. All of those live in the root chakra. And it's interesting that those are the emotions and the governing uh, endocrine system, governing endocrine gland is the adrenal glands because guess where all of those fight, flight, freeze, those rage, despair, terror, rejection, shame, they all come from Chemically, neurotransmitter wise, they come from the adrenal gland, or they're at least kicked off by the, in a cascade that starts from the adre adrenal gland. So as I mentioned on how to check your chakras, and let me know if we have any questions around that, and then I'll get into some ways that you can balance the chakras. Balance, not just the chakras, balance your root chakra specifically. And then our second class in June will be on um, the sacral chakra, moving up. Sacral is the least one that I'm comfortable talking about for some reason. I'm sure there's an imbalance there that I should investigate, but we're going to do it. We're going to power through it in depth. <laughs> oh. All right, so if we don't have any questions. So ways to energetically balance your root chakra and those minor chakras below it bare feet right bare feet on the earth i've already mentioned that a grounding visualization if you will a grounding i call it a grounding cord um, and you can envision your grounding cord however you want it to envision it basically you just sit and close your eyes and then you envision a cord that comes from the base of your spine and goes all the way down to the center of the earth um, some people envision a rope, some people envision like a cat five data cable, some people envision a vine, it doesn't matter. Whatever it looks like is just perfect. And you envision that cord going down to the earth and then you envision that liberating and manifesting energy flow. So liberating from the earth, manifesting to the earth, going back and forth down that cord to your root chakra. 
and it helps to balance things. You can also visualize. So you can tune in and breathe into that chakra. So you close your eyes, breathe in through your root chakra and out through your root chakra. Okay, and breathe into your root chakra and out through your root chakra. Close your eyes and see what you see. Do you see a tiny little red or black or brown ball? Do you see a cloudy, big, you know, a big, huge spinning chakra, but maybe it's a little cloudy or murky. You can kind of see what it looks like there and then work energetically to clear it. Um, the energy flush, and this is an energy medicine technique. You rub your hands together and shake them off. And then you start at your hips. I'm gonna start at my shoulders, but start at, start at your hips and then push the energy down the front of your legs all the way off your big toe, okay? And you do that a couple of times. And then the very last time, the third time, you're gonna start at your toes and run that energy back up to your hips. And that will ground you really, really quickly. Um, another way involves Chinese medicine, the stomach meridian, stomach points on the meridian, um, and you can just tap right there. Just tap, 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 and that grounds you as well. The other end of that is on your feet, by the way. Um, another one is the neck gates. And we've talked about this before. I told you how the um, there are gates for all seven chakras around the front of the neck. That makes it much easier for people who have limited mobility or if you're working on yourself and you can't reach. All you do to open those. So seven is right in the middle. And then one is just to the right of that. So you just open it, pinch it open, just like that. And then three and five, and then two, four, six. But we're just talking about one today. <laughs> so you can also just do all of them to be safe if you'd like. Um, but the root chakra is just to the right. And I'm probably mirror image for y'all, but this is my right hand. Um, another one that I already mentioned is you can work on the root chakra here on the palm of your hand. It's going to be in a little different spot for everyone, but there's a line or lines on my hand that goes kind of down like this. And if I was a palm reader, I'd probably be able to tell you what that line was called, but it also represents the root chakra. There's also a spot on your foot, but I'm not going to pick my foot up and show you. So um, those are places that you can access the root chakra if you can't get to it yourself. Um, and then I always tell people because putting things like crystals and essential oils on your root chakra or somebody else's root chakra can get real awkward. So just put them on the hips, just on the hip bones. And I like to put one on each side. Let's see, I talked about grounding cords. I talked about inhaling and exhaling through the chakra. Foods, you can eat for your chakras too. And not just eating the rainbow. There's some that have really specific characteristics. So my very favorite for the root chakra is red cabbage and beet kraut. Um, there's a company called Wild, Wild One, I believe, that makes it, and it is the reddest, most beautiful sauerkraut ever. Um, it's the only way I found that I can eat beets and they not taste like dirt, um, but really good for the root chakra. Other things might include strawberries or radishes, root vegetables, so um, things like potatoes or sweet potatoes are also really good. Um, Herb-wise, so plant medicine for your root chakra, things like paprika, horseradish, dandelion, astragalus, sage, so burning sage, right? Clove, cayenne, rosemary, elderberry, uh, valerian root. So I want, if you haven't heard of valerian root, it's really, really great for anxiety. Um, it's kind of like herbal Valium, right? Mushrooms, and then crystal wise, our favorite part. Um, I've mentioned hematite, right? Hematite is really, really great for that root chakra. Carnelian, and y'all know I've got pretty carnelian and ugly carnelian, so <laughs> I really love, let me move this out of the way so I can see, I really love raw stones. That is a raw carnelian. You can kind of see in the middle, so it hasn't been tumbled, it hasn't been polished, it has been cleaned with an acid wash, but that is a plain carnelian. And then when they put it through the little tumbling machine, it comes out looking all cute, like a little red strawberry. Here's another one. And so the cool thing about the root chakra is you can put these in your pocket. You put them, I always joke that that's what that fifth pocket on blue jeans is actually for, is little crystals, but you can put them in your pockets. Um, you can put them in your water, of course, for put them in your uh, the bottom of your gemstone well. Um, but putting them in your pockets makes it a really easy way to kind of set it and forget it and make it easy. Bracelets also work really well, and I don't have any bracelets on today, which is weird, 
but because your hands are often in your lap, which is right there at your root chakra. Um, cinnabar is one I don't think we've talked about before. That's a really good one for breaking up blockages in the root chakra. Caution, it is a toxic stone, so you don't wanna put it in direct method. You definitely wanna use an indirect method for that. And frankly, I think you should use the indirect method for all gem elixirs. It's because you never know what they've been tumbled and polished with. Uh, Muakite. That's another one. This is a little Muakite heart puff. Muakite is one. We talked about sacred spaces last time. Muakite is one that I um, gridded my house with. There's Muakite under my living room. Onyx. That's a really good one. Um, and there's a really great blog post on Hibiscus Moon's website. If you Google Hibiscus Moon Black Stones. Um, because as you can see, this one is shungite, by the way, that's another good one. You get shungite and onyx <laughs> and some obsidian. You get it all together. It's really difficult to tell which black stone is which. And so she gives some really good physical cues on how to tell by weight. You know, shungite's a lot heavier than onyx, all kinds of cool stuff. So definitely check that out. Red Jasper is another really great way. And there, when you are creating a grid or using stones for other chakras, sometimes it's best to lay down and actually do a healing on yourself or use a proxy board and do a healing on yourself. The beauty of the root chakra is that it's really, really portable. So I know my root chakra is out of whack right now because there's a lot of stuff going on. There's a lot of stuff going on worldwide and you know all of those things. So that's why I do it while I sleep, right? Set it and forget it. You can put them under your bed. That's a really great place for root chakra stones. Again, in your claw, or in your uh, in your pockets, another really great place. Um, petrified wood. That's another really good one. Not technically a crystal, but really, really valuable. Um, and if you are in your head super anxious, using something like magnetite, and it's actually magnetic. And I don't know if I demonstrated this for all. Um, I don't know if this is going to be enough so that you can, oh yeah, it's stuck right to it. <laughs> Let me show you that again. So it's magnetic. Boop. So it actually makes a difference in pulling that energy down, right? So pulling that manifesting energy down, uh, if you're anxious, getting that out of the, the upper chakras and pulling it down into the root chakra. Um, you can mess up the magnetism with that, though, if you drop it or if you're not super careful with it. Um, again, that's magnetite. Other good, good ones are almost all agates are super, super grounding for those as well. Man, we ran through 11 pages of notes really, really fast. Do you guys have any questions on the root chakra? Any references you want me to point you to? Um, Judith, what's her name? Not Judith Hall. Um, her last name is Judith, I believe. Judith writes a lot of the Wheels of Life book on chakras. That's a really good kind of starter chakra book if you want to get into it. And then the complete book of chakras is about this thick, <laughs> but it goes really in depth. It's kind of a reference book. It goes really in depth into the, the each chakra as well as each um, indigenous cultures chakra system, you know, for the Celts and the Greeks and um, the African continent and all the different places as well. Let me see if there are questions. Thank you guys for hanging out. Again, next week we're going to talk about the sacral chakra. So hormone problems, um, menopause, reproductive problems, all of those things will be covered there. If you have specific questions about that that you want to make sure that I answer, make sure you ask me and um, I can go more in depth on a particular aspect of that. Um, I'll show you again, Dr. Richard Gerber's vibrational medicine. Um, 220, I believe is where the chakra talk starts. Uh, if that's what you're interested in, yes. 200 even, 200 even is where the chakra, chakra talk starts. <laughs> so if there are no other questions, we have a little bit of time for questions. But if there are no other questions, then I will sign off here for now. Um, I'm going to come up with a homework assignment for you guys and put it in the group 
uh, it'll be around grounding. Um, so I hope that all of you have just a minute to participate in that. And I hope you're staying safe and well, physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally. Um, know that we as a community are here for you. You can put in the group if you need to, you know, just ask for us to send energy or hold you in our thoughts and prayers, um, whatever feels right to you. So thinking of you all, love you all, and I will see you next, uh, not next week, but week after next with the sacral chakra. Be well.